hello and thank you for taking the time to join us to learn a little bit more about Eastern Connecticut State University today. My name is Taylor Hammond. I'm one of the Assistant Director of Admissions here in the Admissions Office on campus and uh, I'm also a proud Eastern alumni. I graduated in 2013 with a Bachelor's in English and Secondary Education and I graduated in 2017 with uh, my Master's in Organizational Management. I typically work with most students from the Greater Danbury area area in Connecticut. I also work with all of our international students, so hopefully I get to meet you either on campus or in your town sometime soon. Uh, today, we are going to be going through a few different things to highlight to give you some general information about the campus. First, we'll talk about academics and our core curriculum. Next, we'll talk more about what it's like to live on campus and be part of our campus community and to be involved in different organizations. And then lastly, we'll talk more about our admission criteria and also our affordability and financial aid. So to start things off, we will get going with our academics. Um, so Eastern is a public liberal arts institution. So what that means is that we're public in the sense that we're part of the Connecticut State University system and we're liberal arts uh, because of the way in which our courses are taught and our curriculum is created for each of our different majors. Many times you'll hear the term liberal arts be thrown around throughout the college search process. And a lot of times students come and talk to me and say, well, what does it actually mean? Um, and so what the liberal arts means is that it's a holistic approach to education. So you'll be taking courses both within your major and outside of your major to gain experiences in different academic areas. You'll also um, really be uh, enhancing your analytical and your critical thinking skills by completing research, writing, reading, and uh, working in groups. And so um, with that, you'll really, you're really going to become a better researcher, a better writer, a better reader and speaker, and you'll also be able to uh, work well with other people, which is so important in the workforce. And so for all of those reasons, employers really do seek out students who come from liberal arts universities because they are trained in thinking critically, always sort of asking questions as to why things are done and how they can improve processes more. Um, and that's the major reason why uh, students choose liberal arts institutions because of that practice and that training that they get at the undergraduate level throughout all four years while they're earning their bachelor's degree. To support students on campus, we have an academic services center, which is basically the entire first floor of our library. Within the academic services center, it houses our advising center, our tutoring center, our math and our writing center. Within the advising center, we have an office of full-time advisors who are there to support students in their graduation plans and make sure that they're staying on track. To do this, they have a program called Eastern in Four, and it's a dual advising program. So you're assigned not only a faculty member or a professor from your academic department and your major, but you're also assigned someone from our advising center. So you actually get two advisors uh, while at the beginning of your freshman year. And at that time, you create something called a four-year plan. So you actually get to know every single class that you need in order to graduate on time. It also lists all the prerequisite courses that students will need to take, um, as well as any elective classes. And it, basically you get to know right from the get-go everything you need to do to be able to graduate in four years for your major. Um, Within the Academic Services Center, they also have a tutoring center that offers tutoring services for our students in a variety of different classes. Uh, they have peer tutors and professional tutors, so it's completely up to you as the student to decide which type of tutoring you prefer. Peer tutors are especially helpful because they're selected by the professor and they've taken the class before. So not only do you get the additional instruction and help that way, but you get to learn a little bit more about what the professor is looking for in their class. Our math center tutors students from our lowest level intermediate algebra courses all the way through the real analysis two class, which is the highest level mathematics class offered in the math major. Um, so those students who work in the math center are able to help students. Uh, within our writing center, they help you plan, um, write and edit your papers, and then you get a stamp on your paper when you finish it so that when you submit it to a professor, they know that you took the extra time to be able to go to the writing center 
Center and learn a little bit more. The best part about going to the Writing Center is that it's not just for English classes, it's also for any sort of writing intensive course that you might have. So you may have a business plan, a lab report for biology or chemistry class, and we have Writing Center tutors available to be able to help students in all of those different academic areas. Next, if you are interested in studying abroad, we have a few different options for you. Uh, we have the traditional semester-long study abroad programs where you go uh, abroad either for the fall or the spring semester. Typically, students will do that during either their sophomore or their junior year at, during their time at Eastern. Recently, some of the most popular places students have gone, uh, Spain was our most popular destination this year. Last year was Australia. The year before that was Italy. So we have students kind of going all around the world every single year. Um, we have over 50 different partnerships with universities around the world, and you can just go right into our study abroad office to be able to get more information about studying abroad and what it would take for you to be able to do that. We also have a really unique program called Global Field Courses, and these are a bit different than the traditional study abroad. You actually take the class during the fall or spring semester, just like any other one of your courses, and then you get to travel abroad with your class and with your professor during the winter or the summer breaks. So you'll notice on the slide we have two pictures here. On the left, that is a picture from an environmental earth science course that went to Iceland, and they were studying geothermal heating, so they got to learn all about geothermal heating in their class on campus in some of our buildings we have, and then they got to go to Iceland to learn about the trends and new technology in that area. On the right hand side, you'll notice that uh, we have a picture of a class that was a tropical biology course that goes to either Costa Rica or San Salvador every other year. It's been running for at least the last 35 years, so you'll probably have a chance to be able to do it. And what they do is uh, during the semester, they get to study marine life and uh, some biological life that's only native to those particular areas. Um, and when they go down to Costa Rica and San Salvador, they complete um, research while they're there and they usually will bring it back and present it at conferences throughout the next year. So there are some really cool opportunities. I highlighted two science courses here, but we've had communication courses go all across Europe. We've had psychology courses go all around the world between uh, Hawaii to Ireland, um, and we've had theater courses go all around the world as well. So pretty much we have a global field course for every single major class um, that's available. So next we'll talk a little bit about internships. So here at Eastern, about 95% of students either complete some sort of internship or a practical learning experience. Um, and by practical learning experience, I mean research or getting hands-on experience in their particular area that they're looking to study. Um, our Center for Internships and Career Development is an excellent resource available to students. They link students with employers for um, internships and also for jobs after graduation. They uh, uh, we'll do resume writing, career counseling, they'll do mock interviews to be able to help students kind of get their nerves out and work on that. Um, you'll notice there's a small photo in the corner that's a picture of one of our internship fairs. So each semester this office brings companies right to our campus so students can walk around and hand their resume to internships right on the spot and oftentimes they're able to get interviews that day. Um, you'll see highlighted a few of our recent internships that students have done. Students do them on campus, off campus during the semester, during the summertime. We have students interning all year round um, to really be able to get that experience that they need in order to get a job after they graduate or to get into graduate school. And that segues nicely into some of our outcomes. So more than 90% of our recent graduates are either employed or in graduate school within six months after graduation. You'll see on the left some of the employers that some of our recent grads within the last five years have joined. Um, and on the right hand side, you'll see some universities where our students have moved on to graduate school. So now we'll talk a bit more about the campus community, the size of Eastern, to give you a good idea of what it's like to be a student here. We have a about 4,200 undergraduate students, so we're considered a medium-sized school when you're looking at all the universities across the U.S. Eastern specifically, we are part of the Connecticut State University system, and we are the smallest of those four universities. We're also the most residential, so we have the highest percentage of our students actually living on campus, which really makes it a better experience for you. 
like I mentioned before, we're primarily an undergraduate university as well. So we do have some graduate programs, but the majority of our resources are really going to our undergraduate programs. In the classroom, you'll find that you'll never really have large classes. We're really well known for having small classes. Our average class size is about 23 students. Um, your freshman and maybe your sophomore year, you'll find you'll have 20 to 23 students in a class, but after that, you'll really have about 10 to 15 students in a class. You really do get to know your professors well, so you get that one-on-one -on -one attention and that individualized course of study that you might need so you can have the academic support that you require. Um, one other thing I'll mention is that we don't have any teaching assistants or graduate assistants teaching courses. So what that means is you're actually able to learn from a professional in the field, from an expert in the field, and you're able to use them for networking purposes during your time at Eastern and also after you graduate as well. And then lastly, I'll mention some of the diversity on campus. We have students from all over the state, all over the country, and all over the world. So almost all of Connecticut towns are represented. We have 33 different states. So we have students coming from all over the country. And then we have students coming from about 20 different countries around the world. Um, and also about 30% of our students identify as a student of color. Um, so our campus is very diverse. You'll always be able to meet someone new and kind of get to know different people every single day that you're here. Now we get to talk about some of the fun stuff. So we'll talk a little more about what it's like to live on campus. Um, so we have 14 different residence halls. Eight of them are upperclassmen halls. So therefore our sophomores, juniors, and seniors. All of our upperclassmen halls are apartment style. So they have kitchens, bedrooms, bathrooms, um, and living rooms all within one apartment. So typically it'll about, be about four people per apartment and you get your own room. Uh, for our first year students, we have six different residence hall options. So we have four traditional style halls. You'll see that pictured on the top section. So that's sort of like your classic college dorm um, with a long hallway or corridor and rooms on both sides and then a common living room area uh, and a common bathroom area on each floor. We also have two suite style buildings. So that is actually pictured at the bottom here. Um, and so one of our suite style buildings has a living room within each suite and one has a common living room on each floor. Um, you can visit our, um, our virtual tour online to really be able to check out what these buildings look like. Our buildings called Mead, Constitution, Burnap, Crandall, Winthrop and Burr are our first year housing options. So I would highly recommend checking out some of those buildings after the tour talk today so you can really get a good idea of what our housing options look like. We have some really excellent housing options. Um, we also, every single residence hall is equipped with mailboxes, laundry facilities, study lounges, internet access. Every student has access to printers in their residence halls and academic buildings. And then about 85% of our first year students live on campus and then the majority of our students really do live on campus. So you, you will come to Eastern and find you'll have sort of that classic college experience getting to live on your own for the very first time and meet lots of new people. If you choose to live on campus for your freshman year, you are required to have a dining plan. Um, as part of that dining plan, you get access to our one dining hall on campus. It's called Hurley Dining Hall. And then you also get $125 dining dollars to use at our student center food court, our library cafe, and then our cafe in Schaefer Hall, which is one of our residence halls. Um, Students get unlimited access to the dining hall, so you can come and go as often as you please. You can eat as much as you want. They also have a to-go option, so you can take the food back to your residence hall or to a meeting if you need to. Um, and then the food court, library cafe, and Schaefer cafe all have sort of grab-and-go type options and food court options as well. There are also some excellent restaurants in the local area. So if you like some local spots, um, there's some really great places to eat just off campus that students will sometimes visit as well. For safety on campus, we have 18 state certified police officers. They're available 24 seven and they're always on campus and they're able to assist students with anything that they need. We have 71 different blue light emergency phones spread all around campus as well. If you press the button on one of the blue light emergency phones, it will call the Eastern and Willimantic Police to respond to the campus to be able to assist a student. 
We also have a shuttle that runs around campus. Uh, it has 10 stops on campus and two stops off campus. Uh, it stops at each place about every 10 to 15 minutes or so. There's also an app that students can download to be able to track where the shuttle is. It looks just like Uber, so you can see exactly where it is on campus and how long it'll take to come to you. Two of the stops off campus are at our local Walmart, so students are able to get off campus to get any sort of necessities, groceries, things like that that they might need. And then our other local off campus spot is at the Eastbrook Mall that has sort of, you know, any sort of shopping options that you might need. We have a notification system as well. We call it Eastern Alert, and that will send you a call, text, voicemail, or and also an email about any sort of weather delays or closures or emergencies that might be happening on campus. Parents can also opt in to the alert notification system as well. So now we get to transition to some fun things with student life. So on campus, we have over 100 different clubs and organizations, 18 Division III athletic teams, and then over 200 different club and intramural teams. You'll see here highlighted in blue some different categories that the clubs may fall into, and highlighted in black are some examples of some of the clubs that we have available to students. Academic clubs typically are more focused on a student's major. It's a great way to get to know other students who have a similar academic interest to you and also get to know faculty on a little bit more personal level. Uh, we have a lot of community service clubs on campus and also a department for community service. So if you like giving back and volunteering, this is a great way to do so. For our media clubs, our campus lantern is our campus newspaper. ETV is our TV station, totally student run. And WECS is our radio station. So if you're looking to get some hands-on experience in media or broadcasting, this is an excellent way to do so. And a lot of the rest of our clubs fall into either special interest or recreational clubs. Um, so we have things from a ski club, an outdoors club, a dance team, a photography club. We also have clubs like the Knitwits, which is a knitting club. Um, we have a yoga club a football club, anything and everything that you can think of. For student activities, these all three of these different programs are for campus-wide programming, so this is for everyone on campus to be able to enjoy. Our campus activity board, we call them CAB, uh, is responsible for the majority of our campus-wide programming. So they will do uh, pre-release movie showings every week on campus in one of our theaters. Uh, they also do discounted trips to New York City and Boston, so they go to at least one Broadway show each semester. They'll go to sporting events in Boston and New York City, and they'll do all sorts of really cool different trips. One of them, for example, was an indoor skydiving trip. So for $25, students got round trip transportation to and from the, the facility in New Hampshire. And it was about a $300 value what the ticket was to be able to do indoor skydiving. So pretty cool opportunity. Um, they also do daytime weekend and uh, evening late night events as well, all centered around a theme to sort of add to the campus culture and things that are happening. And then most importantly, they also host our fall and spring concerts every year. So they host some of our large artists who come and perform. In the past, we've had artists like B.O.B., Wale, um, T-Pain, the Goo Goo Dolls. So we've had a variety of artists come and perform, which is pretty cool uh, to be able to see one of those guys perform right on campus. We also have Friday After Dark and the Residence Hall Association. These two programs are out of our housing office, but they also offer uh, weekend trips, late night programming, and things available for um, different residence halls so that if you're not doing something with your club or a different campus-wide program, you're able to actually do something right in your residence hall. Lastly, we'll talk quickly about athletics. So we are division three for athletics. We have nine national championships between our baseball and our softball teams. We were also win the conference. Uh, we've won the conference several times this year. So we're very competitive across our division three athletics. Um, we also have club sports. Those are highlighted at the bottom. Um, those teams still compete against other universities, but they're just not part of our division three lineup of sports. And so we'll transition to talk a bit about financial aid and costs, and then we'll talk about admissions. So here highlighted in yellow is the total direct cost for an in-state student, an out-of-state student, or for students who are from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine, you qualify for the New England Regional Discount Program. Um, the tuition and fees is highlighted in the bottom in white. The total direct cost in yellow that I mentioned is the tuition, the fees, the housing, and the meal plan. 
For financial aid, we require the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. For juniors looking to apply, that will open up in your senior year sometime um, on October 1st is the date that you'll be able to start filling out the FAFSA. And then Eastern requires it to be submitted by March 1st. So you'll have to get that to us by March 1st. That's our priority filing date um, to qualify for the most financial aid. So please make sure that you do your FAFSA as early as possible. It's really important to be able to maximize your financial aid package. Every application is automatically reviewed for merit scholarships. Merit scholarships range from about $1,500 all the way up to $8,000 per year for in-state students. So there's a pretty big variety of scholarships that are available and it's all based on your high school grades, which I'll talk about in a couple minutes. We do have an honors program that covers tuition. Um, so it is our largest scholarship that's offered. It is a separate application. So you do need to be accepted to Eastern first before you can apply to the honors program. The honors program, when you do fill out the, separate, the second application, it will be due February 1st of your senior year. And then lastly, uh, our interest-free payment plans are available to students to help break up some of the payments for tuition throughout the semester into smaller payments. And so now we'll talk a bit about uh, the admission criteria. So this past year, our average GPA was about a 3.3 on a 4.0 scale. What we're looking for is about a 3.0 GPA and above for admission. On the new SAT, we look for somewhere between a 1020 to 1190. And then if you're choosing to take the ACT, it would be a composite score of somewhere between a 19 to 24. With both the SAT and ACT, we do super score. So if you plan to take the SAT two more than one time, so two, three, four times, we'll take your highest possible English score that's earned and your highest possible math score that is earned to put that together to create to super score your SAT or your ACT. When you apply, uh, we are rolling admission, so we don't have any deadlines, um, but what that means is that as soon as you apply and you get all of the documents that are listed in the bottom half of this slide into us, we will be able to release a decision to you right away. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you'll be able to hear back from Eastern and the sooner you'll be able to make a decision from us. We are on the Common application, also called the Common app. That is the best way for you to apply. It hooks up very easily to Eastern and also um, for a lot of school counselors working in Naviance. Um, so I highly recommend applying through the Common application. In order to review your application, we need you to apply, which will also include your essay. Um, if you're applying through the Common application, you'll have about seven different essay prompts to choose from, so you can choose the one that works best for you and submit that. You'll be able to ask your school counselor to submit your high school transcript to us and also your letters of recommendation. Those letters can be from a school counselor, they can be from an academic teacher, they can also be from a coach or um, maybe a boss if you have a job outside of school, but we do highly recommend getting some from your academic teachers. Those typically are the best for the admission committee um, in support of your application. And then lastly, you'll send us your SAT or your ACT scores directly through either of those testing services. One last thing I'll mention is that we are test optional. So for those students who feel that their uh, standardized test scores really don't reflect what they can do in the classroom and what they're capable of, this is really for you. So when you apply, you'll be able to apply to not consider your SAT scores, but with that, you're required to have an unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher, or about a B plus average. What we will do is we'll go through your transcript with a fine tooth comb and we'll only look at your academic courses. So think your English class, science courses, history, social sciences, uh, and foreign language courses. Um, also your math classes as well. So we'll only be looking at your academic courses and the grades that you earned in those classes. Uh, so if you have about a B plus average grade across all of those classes, uh, you'll be able to be accepted as a test optional student and you will not have to submit your test scores. If you ever have questions, you're able to reach out to any of either myself or any of my colleagues uh, about the test optional policy and we'll be able to work with you on an individual basis to see what is best for you um, and the best way for you to be able to apply. 
So that is all for me today. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to let me introduce you to Eastern and get to know you a little bit more. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, my name is Taylor Hammond, and my information is all on our, our website under the admissions staff link. I can't wait to get to meet you on campus someday soon, and hopefully we'll get to get to know each other very soon. Thanks again.